today things are going to get a little personal. I want to tell a story because I mentioned it in a previous video that I did that there was probably about a good 10 days where I was basically unavailable, uh, you know, via phone as well as social media and, you know, not normal thing for me. I'm typically posting every single day. And so anyway, I just wanted to share what happened in my life at that time uh, so that you guys are just aware of what's going on. And then uh, again, I, I do think the, the story has some value as far as how it could potentially help you as well. Me and my family had uh, planned a trip down to Costa Rica. Um, so uh, family vacation, my wife, my two children, um, I have a 10 year old son and a seven year old daughter. A little trip down to Costa Rica. We were gonna spend 10 days down there and it was a great time. And honestly, up until uh, a few days before we were you know, scheduled to fly home, my wife started feeling you know, really not great, you know, just feeling really sick. Um, and, you know, we didn't think anything of it. We figured, okay, we'll just let her recover a little bit. I ended up pushing the, you know, flight back a day just to make sure she had time to feel better. Um, and, and there was a lot that kind of went into it prior to that. There were some symptoms and things. Anyway, I thought she was just very severely dehydrated. And so it got to the point where, you know, she was really not doing good and, and we couldn't just you know, stick her on a plane and, and head home. So I ended up finding a, an emergency room, a, a private hospital there in Costa Rica. I am fluent in Spanish, so I know the language very well, uh, very comfortable with, with all of that. Uh, but again, I, you know, with medical stuff, it's always good to kind of have, uh, you know, people that, that speak your language as well. So I, I found kind of a semi English speaking private hospital there in Costa Rica and, you know, took her down to the emergency room, you know, doing tests and stuff on her. And so anyway, a couple hours later, doctor comes out, wants to speak with me and he's like, you can go ahead and, you know, let your kids stay in the waiting room. I need to speak with you privately. And so, you know, my heart just drops. That's like the last thing you ever want to hear you because you know there's bad news coming. Essentially, this doctor tells me that that my wife is dying, that her her organs are, her, her liver and her kidney are shut down. They are not working and and they're not sure what the problem is. And so, you know, it's it was one of those moments like, is this really happening? Is this guy's telling me that my, my wife is dying? Um, so it was, you know, just a moment of shock. And then and then it was like, okay, well now it's go time. I remember him asking, do, do you want us to treat her? And I'm like, well, of course I want you to treat her. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, I need you to fix her. She needs to get better. And so anyway, long story short, uh, you know, she ended up spending six days in ICU um, and then another four in a regular hospital bed. So a total of 10 10 days in the hospital, they were able to get her better. They were able to get her, you know, liver and kidneys functioning after a few days. But, you know, that first 48 hours, honestly, was was a nightmare. I'm here in a foreign country with my family, with my kids. And, you know, my wife is now in ICU and I don't know if she's going to make it. Um, on top of that, you know, this is a this is a private hospital. They, they don't accept insurance like it's a it's a cash up front sort of thing. So there's that piece of it. Um, but just the thoughts and things that you go through when, when you're hit with something like that, you know, obviously family comes first so that the business and the phone calls I'm getting for pre-qualifications for, you know, people needing to refinance, um, you know, current loan situations. And by the way, during this time frame that she got, you know, admitted in the hospital, uh, my assistant, who is my right hand woman when I'm, you know, getting the deals through when especially when I'm gone she's on vacation right it was pre-planned she had planned I was supposed to be back so that's why she was on vacation so she was out uh, my other assistant who helps with my social media and my marketing and all of that uh, she comes down with COVID her whole family gets hit with it um, her husband was having breathing problems and he had to go to the hospital and so it was just like the trifecta of bad things happening for Team Hatchman Loans, right? Um, really just scary, scary stuff. And we got her better. Uh, you know, my other assistant and her husband are better. You know, they no longer have COVID. During that time frame, obviously, you know, I'm the, the last thing I'm worried about is, you know, taking phone calls and posting on social media and doing that sort of thing. It was noticeable because I'm pretty active. And so you know, a lot of people ask me kind of what had happened. So I wanted to kind of share this with everyone so that they were aware. And then two, to, to really kind of put that thought in your mind, like pretty big realizations for me that came out of all of this, right? So number one, uh, first of all, I was very happy that one, I, I can speak the language. And so that wasn't an issue. I was able to communicate with the doctors, with the nurses, um, you know, get my way around town, you know, booking the extra hotels, extending the rental car, uh, all of that stuff. So the language barrier was was fine. Um, so that was a huge help. Um, and it was kind of cool to think about, you know, luckily I had that skill set to be able to help me. And then two, the the financial aspect of it, right? A private hospital 
where they don't accept insurance. Like it's, it's a money cash up front sort of day. And, and that was not a stress. You know, luckily we had the means to be able to handle that. The amount of people that, that I did reach out to or that reached out to me, um, the, the circle of influence, the friends, the family, the coworkers, everybody that reached out was just so amazingly helpful. Um, so huge shout out first off to my, to my mother. She was staying at our house in, you know, in Arizona while we were gone, uh, watching our two dogs. Um, and she, you know, she stayed there, took care of the house, took care of the dogs. And so that was a huge help. I, it was nice not knowing that that was a stress that, you know, that's not a stress she had it covered. Um, and then, you know, the amount of coworkers and friends that reached out, how, how can we help? Everybody wanted to help. They don't know how, obviously, you know, I'm in a different country dealing with all of that. It's, there's not a lot you can do, but you know, I, I did have an amazing outreach. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that did reach out to me and, you know, gave us their good vibes and their prayers and their, all of that good stuff. So I, I really appreciate that. And it just, it, it gave me a moment afterwards, after it all went down, to really reflect on how amazing of, of a good circle we have. And then, you know, what a terrible thing that happened. But luckily, it worked out for the best, right? You know, my wife's alive and well. She's healthy. She's, you know, back to normal. You know, the experience that we had to deal with, you know, my kids having to basically be on their own. You know, they're 10 and 7. They're not you know, <laughs> they're pretty young. And so to them to be able to step up and, you know, my, my son to kind of watch out for her, you know, my daughter and because they had to be alone in the hotel room a lot of the times because I was having to go back and forth and, you know, handle all of it. It was wild, but it, it, it brought about a lot of, uh, you know, thankfulness and then a lot of clarity as far as where I wanted things to go in the future. When you're put in those situations, you really look at what you want your life to look like going forward. And so it really helped put a lot of those things together and, and then and again, just the the nice thing, not knowing, you know, not being stressed about the financial aspect of it. Life is is precious, right? You never know what can happen in any given moment. So you have to ask yourself, are you prepared for emergency situations? Um, obviously, I don't think anyone's ever fully prepared. I know I wasn't, but I was able to handle it and 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 we moved on and we're here today and and we have a lot to be thankful for. It's crazy to think about this thing. So so I encourage you to take a moment and think about the unthinkable, right? The the scary things and what you would do in that situation. And are you prepared? Do you have the tools, the financial savvy, all of that stuff in place to be able to handle something like that? It gets people thinking. And so again, just I I have such a great moment of clarity right now. And so I always try to, you know, come up with the positive of all these situations. And and that was one of them. You know, we it solidified that we do have the right people around us in our lives to help support us and that we're able to kind of move on and, you know, go forward and and yeah that that's pretty much it so that's what went down um in my life so I, again just want to say thank you to everybody that that reached out and helped and uh it's going to be you know full force for the family as well as team hatchman loans so uh that's what went down in costa rica so there you have it guys if you'd love to hear more about this or you have any questions uh let me know but as always like and subscribe and have a great day